I love it more. I have loved playing live and being in the band more this year than any other year. That's I have just... cried on this on on this tour. I've cried, I think, three or four times. Really? At the end of normally at the end of somewhere only we know, but. Keen, hello, Tom and Richard, how you doing? Hi, we're good, thanks. Yeah, really, very well. good, really good to have you on Virgin Ready. We were just talking off air about the perils of coming to a festival when you've got kids. I love yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're, I, I'm quite new to the bringing kids. Tom's pretty experienced at taking kids to festivals. Yeah, I took my three-month-old daughter to Glastonbury. Uh, <laughs> this was 10 years ago in a mud year. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, if you know, that's a baptism of fire. Yeah. Every, every time I've taken her to a festival since has been a lot easier than that. And you were saying, you know, every moment of any kind of sleep that you can get when you're on the road mm. and you've got kids, every moment counts, right? There's something about a tour bus that's like kind of taking anaesthetic or something. <laughs> yeah. Like immediately you get on it and think, right, I'm going to have a snooze now. And then we, you're out. Yeah, we used to come home from a tour and have a rest. Yeah. And now we go on tour to have a rest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you, like, congratulations, 20 years mm. since you. Hopes and Fears came out. I mean, just describe what your life was like back then when you were writing those songs. What can you remember? I mean, what were the problems in life? What, it what was were the, the problems were we had no money and 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 we've had we just had a succession of knockbacks. We were yeah. so close to signing a record deal this one time. We were literally hanging around with our with like our manager saying, "Oh, just you know, it's going to happen today." Definitely, and you know, I remember that drive home that night from London back to our because we were all like we'd all had to move back to our parents' houses to you know with our tails between our legs just because we hadn't got anywhere and, and it was just sort of failure after failure. So before Hopes and Fit, but the songs were coming together and that's, um, I think that's the thing that kept us going. And when you're in a band, there's always somebody else who's feeling up when you're feeling down. Yeah. And so I, 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 it must be so hard when you're a solo artist, you know, in those mm. positions because the lows were very low. Yeah. So we went from zero to hero very fast. Well, I was going to ask you, my next question yeah. was going to be, can you, what was that moment? What was that breakthrough moment? Well, I think that the bit that stands out for me is when, and sorry to mention other radio stations oh, here. Oh, wait, edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> but we... Uh, we Beep, played it on <laughs> beep. <laughs> <laughs> but we'd struggled to get anyone to take notice of us. And yeah. then we got this, a guy got called Simon Williams from a small label called Fierce Panda, independent label, came to a show at a... A pub called the Betsy Trotwood in Farringdon in London and he said oh yeah I'll stick out a song for you and, and that what that song was everybody's changing and um, so he put it out on his independent label and I think up to that point success or any of that had seemed quite an abstract idea but as soon as we heard everybody's changing kind of coming across the the airways yeah it, it was just a magical feeling it was like Oh, okay. This might this can happen. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it didn't sound out of place on the radio, no. which was amazing. So yeah. yeah, suddenly it's like, oh, actually, this yeah, this sounds like me. Oh, wait a minute, <laughs> we're doing this properly. You know, this is all right. Yeah. And I know that you're you're touring the album again. Mm. Um, what kind of you must get so many great comments, like feedback from the fans talking about how pivotal those songs were. Yeah, there's a, um, a friend of mine was in a cab the other day and the cabbie was saying, on their way to see us play, and the cabbie was saying that he and his missus have a somewhere only they know that's like a little patch of grass near near London Bridge that where they get fish and chips and they go and they haven't even told their kids about it. Like it's, <laughs> it's this special place. And so, the, yeah, these songs have such a depth of meaning and such a history for some people that it, it really is very special seeing, seeing how much they mean to people as we're playing them. And, you, yeah. and, and Tom, you must have seen the fans kind of grow with you as well. Yeah. Do you sometimes look out there and go, I recognise that person or that, or, or, you know, those people or that gang or this venue or, you know, how does it feel <laughs> now in 2024? Well, it's interesting because there's enough time now for there to be the, the kind of early adopters, like the, the people who were there right at the beginning. And, and their children. So, you know, it's like... Yeah, some of the kids look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen the fans enough. That some of the mum and dad, you know, or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, there are definitely kids that exist because parents met at Keen Gigs. So, yeah. But I think we, we always loved bands who made sort of classic, timeless-sounding music. We were never, like, a kind of fashionable sort of a band. 
we always prize something, you know, doing something that felt kind of classic and um, stylish or whatever to us was important. Mm. And so, um, was it's that not part of the process then? Because they so. are. Did you know back then? All the songs you've mentioned are they're timeless, aren't they? They just work well, so. Hope. They are. <laughs> it seems to be that that way, you know. And I think, um, yeah. So I think that's what keeps attracting people to our music. It doesn't feel like oh, it's very much of a time. It does sort of. Um, have that more classic feel so that I think that that's been the lovely thing I think for us as a band sort of 20 years on from the record is that it isn't just the people who are there at the beginning there's there's lots of people coming to it for the for the first time and um, it still has a life to it which is great and the other question I've got to ask is what happens when you're sick to the back teeth of a song <laughs> you're like oh, come on I've been doing this for 20 years I mean so do you continue to to, to, to do the ones that you don't like so much? Do you reinvent them? How, what's the process like? Honestly, every gig is different because all the people are different, the venue's different. And when you, all you've got to do is look out and see what the songs mean to people in the audience. And then you realize that, you know, this might be the one time in their lives that they see you play live. And, and I think that's enough to keep me motivated. I, I don't, like not enjoy playing songs uh, any of the songs i don't know what it's like uh, no you. i've never i've never found any of the songs tiring to sing or perform yeah it's always it's always like it's a dream right you know it's exhilarating and also if tom gets bored he can just get them to sing it back so he... <laughs> <laughs> the other question i've got for you now singing the songs now how's it changed as far as audiences are concerned because they didn't have phones you know when you were oh. I mean, how's that changed for you? That's a really good point. Yeah. Well, you you sometimes say, you know, put your lighters up and then it's not lighters, it's phones, isn't it? <laughs> but, yeah. I said that at the age. I was like, you know, 20 years ago, it was let's stick your lighters in the air for this song. And now it's stick your phones in the air. But don't run your battery down if you need to get a train home. Yes. Like, we, we are so <laughs> reliant on them now. And I think it's, yeah, it's just a different time, isn't it? People obviously record lots of bits of shows and that's their way of remembering them. I mean, my own personal view is that I like to go to a show and for my phone to be switched off yeah. and just to take it in that way. But we're not, we're not the kind of band who get up and say, you know, no phones and put it away. Is like, it I a know nice some feeling when do. you can see, you know, 10,000 phones all <laughs> filming? Or is it, slightly, is it slightly intimidating? How does it feel? Um... Well, you, you do start to wait. Oh, I hope I'm singing this bit in tune if someone's <laughs> recording it, you know. Um, it's funny, you, we used to sort of agonise over, you know, you'd have a load of press photos and, and you'd think, oh, I look a little, you know, I've got this weird wrinkle in that one or, you know, my collar's up. And now there's just every worst photo you could imagine. <laughs> From every angle. Because everyone's <laughs> taking pictures all the time. So there's no, it's like, it's game over. So just, yeah. hope, just hope it sounds good. Yeah. And do you still get the kick that you, you've always had step out on that stage because uh, forgive me if, uh, if I'm wrong is this your first latitude yes or, it is yeah. yeah yeah we got we 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 sort of well we were meant to do it a few years ago weren't yeah, we and then COVID, COVID, COVID oh, that was the one okay. I've been a few times Jesse lives yeah. nearby so I've yeah. been with Jesse a couple times I don't yeah, know if I've you've been, been to I've been one. as a yeah. punter yeah yeah it's a lovely festival we've always wanted to do it and it's lovely to be here at last but I, in answer to your question you know in terms of <laughs> you know do we love it as much? I mean I I love it more I have loved playing live and being in the band more this year than any other year that we've been together Why in our is whole lives. Well, I think because we, we've, we've become a bit sort of kinder to each other and we've done a lot of reflecting and been through a lot as people, as individuals and as a group. And I think we've come back together with this kind of collective um, sense of how important our friendship is to each other how fundamental this band and these songs and this life that we have is uh, to, to us um, as a group and individuals. Um, and also, like I think the first time around, talk about like early on with hopes and fears, it was such a kind of, um, you know, mad sort of freight train ride. It you was know. meteoric, exactly. wasn't it? And, and we were too, I think we just weren't able to sort of take it in properly. And so to have this sort of second bite of the cherry where we can, with a bit bit more time on our side, you know, we can st we can stand there and look out and really savour it and really yeah. enjoy it. It's funny, Tom put together the set list for tonight and it, and when he sent it through, he said, he said, you know, we're not going to ram it full of, you know, you could probably squeeze maybe one song if you absolutely bang through it. Or we can do one song less and then and enjoy it. 
and take our time with it yeah. and experience it and you know feel it and i and i think that's really important to do that yeah people i think people notice that as well i think that's the feedback we've got this year is that people can see that we're having a great time and that's it that's very infectious so well, yeah we shall be doing that tonight hopefully Absolutely. spreading some love does it get emotional at all because here we are yes. i can hear your kids <laughs> Yeah. And like thinking Sorry. how, <laughs> yeah, that screaming is our kid. Yeah. How I have cried on this on on this tour. I've cried, I think three or four times. Really, at the end of normally at the end of somewhere only we know. But and what is it? What what set what sent you over the edge? I think it's just a realization, like Richard was saying earlier on, about what the songs mean to people, and and just being able to experience that in an authentic way. Like I think I went for many years of my life, didn't really know myself didn't really like myself had this kind of very strange relationship to being a front man and to to being in a band and I think finally I've come to uh, you know enjoy it understand it know myself like myself and so therefore you can actually savor the moment and realize what's happening in the moment and that is very powerful emotionally so I feel that's that's been the story of this year for me and I, I don't know speaking for the others probably as well yeah absolutely and you've uh, obviously <clears throat> done uh, solo work. Yes. You were Chris Evans. You were here uh, at the top of the tower uh, just before Christmas, I think it was. What, what's the plan next? I've got to ask you this. I know it's an obvious right. one, but will we get more stuff from Keane? Or what's yes, going to happen? Yes, you will get more Tell stuff me, from Keane. Tell me, please. Come on. Uh, I'm going to leave it to get you. a bit of both. I think next year, Tom's going to have, you're going to have a few months to do some solo stuff. But hopefully. also, hopefully. perhaps before and and definitely after there'll be some more keen stuff too so there, yeah. we've already been working on some new keen things so yeah it's uh, hopefully a good mix there's a lovely energy around keen at the moment so i think you know i think always as artists you you want to sort of jump on a creative wave you know and so i think we're feeling that at the moment and I'm sure we'll be doing that next year. And I love that moment. You know, a moment ago, you said we were putting the set list together for this this show at Latitude. And I love the fact that this is like this is going to be a tailor-made show that you come. So how do you how on earth do you put together the list of songs and the order of the? So how does it work? It's a good question because festivals. We know that not everyone's there to see us specifically people are here for the whole weekend see as much music as they can so you want to play songs that people will know that they've heard on the radio yeah and um but at the same time you know we want a mixture so yeah tom's the king of that something that flows you yeah. can't have bangers all the way through for 90 minutes so. it's a very i mean it's i remember when we've uh we're early days of keen success we got asked on the road with um, with you too we played a, quite a few shows with them yeah and Bono used to go on about he, he was going on about um, you know the, the track listing of an album and how important it is to take people on a journey yes and he was I think at the time he was sort of slightly uh, bemoaning the fact that he didn't feel they got it quite right with how to dismantle yeah. an atomic bomb yeah I mean, it's a very long album title for a start <laughs> but, um, but I think that's the same thing applies to to, to the live show you got to take people on a journey you don't want to hammer it hammer their ears too much at the beginning but you you also want to get them buzzing it's, it's yeah i think it's one of those things that you, uh, so over years you over the years you build up a sort of enough experience to figure out kind of how to plot it out but a lot i think a lot of that's sort of feels unconscious now yeah yeah, yeah definitely. can i ask one more question i want an answer from both of you quite unfair i'm gonna chuck it at you you can say go away what's been the highlight so far it's hard to look past Glastonbury, which was quite recent. Um, going back to the main stage there, which was a gig that I couldn't remember a thing about having done before. I literally couldn't remember a really? moment of it. it. It was all adrenaline and, and it was over in a rut. Uh, and so going back there and getting a chance to sort of experience it. Um, and with Jesse in the band as well this time was, was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Tom? Yeah, um, well, I would probably also choose that moment, but just to say something different, I get, uh, playing the O2 again, we did two nights of the O2 in May, and we did it exactly 20 years after the release of Hopes and Fears. Um, and particularly the second night there, was I just felt like there was this, just a beautiful energy in the room, and I cried. <laughs> I feel emotional <laughs> there were so many happy faces yeah, in the room, yeah. it was incredible. 
Yeah. It, that sounds so, and it just sounds like you're having the best time doing this as well. Yeah. So yeah. it's a joy to see. Listen, thank you for your time. Thank Can't you. Can't wait to see you once again. Is bed shaped in the set list? Be tonight? Bed shaped is in the set list. I'm a you might have to wait till the I'm very end for <laughs> it. I'm going to make you sweat, but it is in there. Don't worry. Keen, thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you.